Hey guys, Scott back again with a new beer face-off video today. Um, you, before you tune away, um, I'm doing it with two classics. Um, I'm going to be doing a partially blind, uh, but I thought this would be a lot of fun, okay? Uh, I'm doing two classics here, American Lagers, right? I'm doing Coors Banquet, okay? Those of Karate Kid fame know this beer well. You know, I, I definitely haven't had this in, in quite some time. Um, Obviously, I enjoy craft beer better, um, but I thought it'd be pretty fun to match these two up. Coors Banquet, okay, versus good old Budweiser, okay, good old-fashioned. You can't get more plain Jane than this. Now, before you tune away, why I wanted to do this is because these beers are very popular. Uh, I know Budweiser's gotten a bad rap recently in the media. I, you know, I try not to confuse politics with my beer channel here, but um, I just thought two very you know, classic beers. Um, obviously, I've had them before. It's been quite a while that I've had them. Um, but what I'm going to do is partially blind. Partially blind meaning I know the two beers that are going to be poured, uh, but I just don't know what glass they're going to be in because off camera, I have someone that's going to actually pour the beers in the glasses for me. Um, I probably may have it pop over my shoulder on a couple of the beer face-off videos if you've watched them. Uh, so you may know before I know why as you're as I'm videoing this if you know what I mean so I may have a pop over my shoulder because after the, after the fact I probably will have um, I may put like the Budweiser because it's B to the left side of the screen and the Coors to the right on the right side of the screen so even as I'm kind of just going through the beer and giving you what I who I think wins the beer face off uh, you may actually see a pop over the shoulder um, kind of give you the answer already with, with it um, so anyway, I just thought it'd be a lot of fun. Um, again, Coors Banquet uh, and Budweiser. Of course, I'll make some comments about the beer. I'm not going to break this down like my beer dissection videos do, but I've seen other guys do this that do similar beer channels that like I do, and I, I find it a lot of fun because you know some have done like ten different. They've done Keystone, Budweiser, Miller. They've had blindfolds on. Both of these beers are going to be looking pretty clear uh, or pretty similar, I should say. They're both going to probably be very straw colored. Um, so by just the, vis the, you know, the visual effects of it, I don't think it's going to give it away. Um, if I had a, a Bud Light or a Coors Light or, you know, even the American Light Lager, I, I may be able to do it. So I'm going to, in a second, pause the video. I'm going to have these beers poured out for me. Um, and then, like I said, I'm, you know, when, when you see the graphic come up over my shoulder, I'm probably going to have the Budweiser left and the course to the right, even though I'm not going to know that at the, at the time. I'll be knowing this after the fact. All right. So anyway, guys, uh, beer face off Budweiser versus Coors. Let's see which one I enjoy. OK, more, um, which I don't think I've ever drank them side by side before, or at least maybe not in the last 30 years. All right. So I'm going to pause the video real quickly and we'll come back and these will be poured out. All right. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I had these beers poured out for me. Um, what I'm going to do is probably have the, the beer that I'm going to pick up first here on the left side of the screen and then um, probably the, the second beer to the right side of the screen. That's kind of what I did in my last beer face-off video. So it stays somewhat blind for me, even though we know it's one of them's Budweiser and one of them's Coors. Um, and I'm going to just tell you basically what I enjoy the most and then... Uh, you know, do, do the reveal. I'll be pausing it again. We'll do the reveal. So let me grab this first one that I actually have in my Merch's Field Brewery glass. Okay, sorry guys over there that are watching this and feel I'm putting an American lager in their, in their beer glass. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. You know, you kind of have, you know, white foam, you know, kind of looks very familiar. doesn't look very dense. looks actually kind of thin. Um, the bubbles aren't really stacked. There's really maybe a touch of frothing at the top of the head, but it looks like it's dissipating uh, as I'm talking to you. Um, let's take a look at this first one. Again, this one I'm probably going to be having on the left side of the screen when, I, when the graphics come up. But, you know, straw colored, maybe a light gold, perfectly clear. You know, when you think of American Lager, um, which both of these are, that's what you're looking for or that's what you're expecting to see. Um, you know, definitely not a hazy, but you know, listen, I love clear beers. I, I you know, I, I do enjoy my hazies too, 
but sometimes there's something to say about these clear beers. So I'm expecting the other one to look very similar to it. Um, actually, you know what I'll do is let me just grab the other one right now and show you. Okay, so it almost looks exactly the same, right? So that, this is beer number two, which I'm probably going to have eventually on the right side of the screen. I don't know which one it is. And this one's beer number one, which looks a little bit lighter in color, okay? And then beer number two. And again, I'm going to try to have these side by side so you can see if you're interested. So let's take a sniff of beer number one, right? The head's already kind of shrinking down, okay? Oh, <laughs> You kind of get, you know, that familiar, like, it's almost like empty uh, can smell. Like, you know, like, you're like, you're smelling the aluminum can on top. You know, it, it's got that subtle, like, herbal floral character, right? Ugh, but there's this, like, again, like, if you, if you took, like, I, I think back when I was in undergrad or even in graduate school, you know, smelling the beer that was kind of like left out overnight or you're, you're in, in the solo cups. That's what you kind of get. And there's really nothing, no malt to speak of here. You know, maybe like doughy at the very most. But, you know, these beers are meant to be that way easy, you know, crushable, easy drinkability, not much flavor and aroma to it. And this is definitely holding up there. But this kind of has a, this first one, uh, which again, I'm going to wind up probably having when I reveal this, it's probably going to be on the left side of the screen when I edit this video. But it's just kind of this, you know, I get images of stale, you know, I, I got a keg of beer with my friends and we didn't drink it that night. And the next day we're trying to, you know, finish it off the next day. Or the, 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 the solo cups um, are left in the back of your car or something. It just smells just dank and old and very, you know, college-like beer, like beer pong. Okay, so anyway, guys, cheers. This is the first one again. I'll show you the color. This one looked a little bit lighter in color. Okay, beer number one. And I haven't tasted this one yet, beer number two. But they look very similar. That's why I didn't think I, need, I you know, needed to, you know, you know, keep it, put a blindfold on or anything. Okay, so cheers. Beer number one. Oh, it's already lost a lot of the carbonation. You know, I, one thing about these American lagers I expect is, you know, because there's not going to be a lot of flavor, great flavor, cold and crisp at least. This one is like just dank, slimy. Um, it drinking, it's drinking like it smelt, like, you know, just college. It just smells like beer pong, beer riddled solo cups laying on the floor. That's kind of what you get. It's just flat beer. You know, similar, familiar, slight herbal character. But on the aftertaste, again, it's just, it's just very thin. And there's not much there, which you would expect. So this one is just, other than liking the clarity of it, it just it tastes too much like you know college. Um, not to say whichever one this is, whether this is Bud or Coors, the other one's not going to be you know blowing this one away. But I don't know. There's like this thin, low mouth feel, kind of like filmy coating I get on my tongue here. Uh, there's not much much character to it at all, which you wouldn't expect. So anyway, guys, let's, that was beer number one. Beer number two, okay, again, it's almost a spitting image in color. Uh, let me sniff this one, even though, I, look, we don't even have, there's not even no head left, okay? Even the one I opened up first here has even like maybe a quarter of an inch of head. This one, I haven't even touched even though it's been sitting out for just as long almost, it looks like just completely gone. Like there's nothing there, but very clear straw colored also. Okay, so cheers guys. Let's just beer number two. Oh. It has a, little, a touch, a touch more body than beer number one. There's a little bit more flavor to it. 
there is a little bit of a, I don't know, it's, it's like a corny, uh, grainy type of uh, taste I'm getting on there. It's not, it has a little bit more flavor than beer number one, but it's very tough to, to differentiate between the two of them. Um, again, this is beer number two again. Yeah. This one actually, when I went back, this beer number two to sniff it, it's almost like I was getting like gasoline smell. Okay, it's not, there's no gasoline hopefully in it. But it's just, it's just again, very empty, gasoline-like. Um, but a touch more, there's definitely a little bit more malt, even though it's still very thin, like white bready type of thing. Um, maybe a slight, slight toast, but again, it's not appealing, but I think better than beer number one as far as the taste is concerned. But I haven't made a decision yet. Uh, let me go back to beer number one, which again, you can see, and again, I promise you I will have pictures over my shoulder. I probably will be revealing the answer while you're watching this because I do have to edit this. Obviously, as I'm talking, I haven't had it edited yet. Beer number one, you know, that slimy old beer, um, very thin. Again, you do a retro nasal thing. It's kind of also like a just old beer to like. And this is what I, when I get flashbacks to college or tailgating at WVU, um, a beer number one. Okay. Carbonation's almost gone already. Beer number two. Again, you know, it'd be tough. Like if I, if I didn't, if someone just grabbed these two beers, which again, I know one's Budweiser and one's Coors. Um, but, I'm, you know, I don't know which one's in which glass. And since they look, this is beer number two, the same color. Okay. You can't even tell. Um, and when I pause this in a few minutes, we'll do the reveal. But let me, let me just taste beer number two again. Again, there's more there. There's more like, there's a little bit more green, a little more white bread than beer number one. But I get this corny aftertaste, which is kind of giving me a little hint on what who I think this beer number two is. Um, but overall, guys, I'm not going to belabor this point. You know, beer number one, again, very thin, almost like old solo cup beer, old, you know, flat beer. Beer number two, maybe a smidgen, um, a little more flavor carbonation. So anyway, this is actually quite funny. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to reveal what, who I think is the best. I'm going to give you a hint on who I, what beer I think is which. Um, and then I'll pause it and then I'll find out which beer is which and when we'll, I'll, t I'll come back. So in this beer face-off, okay, between two American lagers, Coors and Budweiser, all right, um, I have to go with beer number two, okay? Not that it was spectacular by any stretch. I just feel like I get less flashbacks of old stale beer at my friend's fraternity party or their tailgate. Um, it has a little bit more flavor to it, a little bit more, um, again, familiar. Um, Again, it has maybe a slightly more herbal hop character, even though in these beers they're, they're made not to have much malt profile, much hop, hop character. But I got to go with beer number two. Okay. Um, let me taste another swig of it versus beer number one. Now, what I'm going to do is I think beer number two, and there was something I said earlier in this on this beer face-off, Beer number two is going to be the Coors. You know why? Because I swear Coors, I believe, uses like corn sugar and stuff like that. I'm getting more of a corny kind of taste to it. And I think I mentioned it, you know, slipped a little bit before and said kind of like a corn taste. Beer number one, I'm believing, is going to be the Budweiser. Okay. Why? It's a little thinner. I know they use some rice in the grist, uh, which, again, gives you the sh fermentable sugars and... The grain uh, and and but it's very thin and it has doesn't have much malt backbone to it. 
Um, I did, while mentioning that, I did do a, a video of what is style, either American Lager and or German Pilsner, I think. And I talk about the history of the German Pilsners and the Germans coming to the United States and then starting to go from, you know, the, the malt wasn't as great. So they used some six row malt and used rice, okay, to try to clarify the beer because their beer was very cloudy. So I think beer number one is the Budweiser and beer number two is the Coors. And I'm going with the beer face off today as beer number two, thinking that it's the Coors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video right now. I'm going to find out, see if I was correct, and I'll have some last closing comments. All right, guys, hold on one second. Hey, guys, I'm back. Um, hip, hip, hooray. I was absolutely correct. So um, not that there was a big, it was a 50-50 uh, chance on picking the right beer, but beer number one, which I did not pick, was indeed the Budweiser, Okay. Very straw, very clear. The other one is, is, when I'm looking at it now, now that I know that beer number two was indeed the Coors, here's beer number two, okay? But I'll have them side by side, but when I put them in front of me right now as I speak to you, take my word for it, they look exactly the same color. Uh, maybe the Coors is a touch, you know, more, you know, darker straw, you know, or lighter, you know, maybe more of a lighter gold, but really, you, you probably couldn't tell. Um, and again, this was beer number two, which was Coors, which I had picked, um, as the winner, as well as picking it out. Cause again, the Coors taste sometimes gives me a little bit more of that corn, this Budweiser, which I'm going to taste again right now that I know indeed it is this one and my Mauritius field glass. Sorry guys over there. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just very thin, less even malt flavor or whatever flavor I'm getting out of it. But listen, ice cold bud. I think, listen, I think all beers have a time and place. Um, I'm not going to have a 12 pack or a case of a Budweiser in my refrigerator because I just don't drink it that regularly. But a nice hot day, like where I'm filming this in July in the summer humidity, it's crisp, it's refreshing, whatever. You know, I think even Budweiser has a time and place. I'm not getting political with you guys. All right. Um, but it definitely is very thin, very extremely low mouth feel. Um, so, you know, it's just, that's why I just feel like it just wasn't going to be the winner. You know, I think a beer pong, I think again, that old beer. Beer number two, which I picked as the winner, as well as predicted that it was going to be the Coors. Um, Even that even still has a little more carbonation in it. It has some more flavor. Not great flavor, okay, like a lot of... I'd rather have a German Pilsner Authentic or Czech Premium Pale Lager, like um, uh, Pilsner Yurkel or things like that. But beer number two has a little bit more flavor. That's the only reason why I went with it. So anyway, guys, in today's beer face-off between Budweiser and Coors, um, I did pick... The Coors Banquet, okay, Johnny from uh, a Karate Kid movie will be very happy. Um, over Budweiser, okay, maybe someday I'll, I'll do Coors Light versus Miller Light. I find these videos fun, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to pick up a high quality IPA or other beer and do a video on it, but it, it is kind of fun to see what I really would, would enjoy if I was picking two. So if I'm sitting at your house in the summertime, and I'm looking in your cooler and I see a, a Coors versus a Budweiser, I'm going to be grabbing your Coors over that because, again, you know, every beer has a time and place. So anyway, guys, I hope you found that fun. Um, I did enjoy the Coors over Budweiser. Um, I was able, luckily, it wasn't a big deal. It was 50-50 uh, picking the Coors. But honestly, guys, if you had to have these two beers side by side, especially blind, mine was partially blind. I knew what two beers they were. Um, though I didn't know which glass they were in, um, you know, it's just very hard to tell. These are very similar. If I had a Miller here, it'd probably be the same thing. Like it just, and even the videos I've watched my fellow beer tubers there that I've seen, sometimes it's so hard because they're just all very similar. There's not much malt profile. There's not much hops, not much flavor. They're made to be crushable, quaffable, easy drinking, and they're just not 
you know, there's not much to them. So anyway, my pick would be Coors over Budweiser, as I said. And anyway, guys, to my next beer video, beer dissection, beer face-off, whatever it may be, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.